which of the following are paramagnetic we have five different nickel complexes atomic number of nickel is 28 and therefore the electronic configuration is argon that has 18 electrons and then 4s2 20 and then 3d8 so total 28 electrons now among the ligands chlorine as well as water are weak field ligands this means that no pairing will occur whereas carbonyl cyanide and triphenyl phosphine these are all strong field ligands this means that while considering the hybridization and bonding in these scenarios we need to think about pairing of electrons so let's look at it one by one in a the oxidation state of nickel will be x plus 4 times minus 1 equal to minus 2 because we have the net charge as 2 minus and for each chlorine we have to give minus 1 as the charge therefore x is equal to plus 2 this means that nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state here and this means that the 4s2 electrons are gone now because 4s is the outer cell therefore electrons should be removed from there first with the n value equal to 4 so therefore for nickel 2 plus we will be having only 26 electrons atomic number is 28 but because it is nickel 2 plus we will be having only 26 electrons therefore it is argon and then 3d 8 i'm trying to explain this using valence bond theory so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 chlorine is a weak field ligand therefore no pairing occurs so we have two unpaired electrons this means a is paramagnetic and for hybridization the metal will be using 4s as well as 4p orbitals hybridization in this case will be sp3 therefore a should be there this means that option 2 is wrong because a is not mentioned there so let's go to b in b we have tetracarbonyl nickel complex here the oxidation state will be 0 for nickel because carbonyl is a neutral ligand so this means that we have argon and then 4s2 3d8 however when the ligands make a complex with the metal the 4s2 electrons will jump to 3d orbitals so that it becomes 3d10 because carbonyl is a strong field ligand so this means that we have no unpaired electrons here n equal to 0 once again hybridization in this case is also sp3 the metal will be using outer orbitals for hybridization sp3 therefore b is diamagnetic so this means that 2 is definitely wrong and then how about c in the case of c we have four cyanide ligands so minus four and outside it is mentioned as two minus therefore the nickel is in plus two oxidation state once again so we have nickel two plus once again that means argon and then 3d8 but cyanide is a strong field ligand so this means that pairing occurs one d orbital will be empty and here the hybridization will be dsp2 it is a square planar complex with the n value equal to 0 therefore c is also diamagnetic that means one is also wrong how about d in the case of d water is a neutral ligand and therefore nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state here because on the outside we see 2 plus so this means nickel 2 plus once again argon and then 3d8 now water is a weak field ligand therefore no pairing occurs here so 6 7 8 we will be having two unpaired electrons it is paramagnetic and the metal will be using the outer shell orbitals 4s 4p as well as 4d for hybridization in this case the hybridization here is sp3 d2 it's an octahedral complex so d is paramagnetic that means d should be there and then how about e in the case of e the nickel is in zero oxidation state once again because triphenyl phosphine is a neutral ligand 
Therefore, the electronic configuration will be argon and then 4s2, 3d8. However, once the triphenyl phosphine ligands forms a complex with the metal, the 4s2 electrons will jump to 3d8. Therefore, this will become 3d10 once again. So, this means that we have no unpaired electrons here. All electrons are paired up. This means this is a diamagnetic complex once again. Therefore, E also should not be there. And the metal will be using 4s as well as 4p orbitals for hybridization. The hybridization here is sp3 and the geometry will be tetrahedral. Therefore, the correct option here is option 3. Only A and D will be paramagnetic.